We've known for a long time that poor diet, lack of exercise, and smoking play a part in causing heart disease. Yeah, but there is a new one to think about, and that is rush hour traffic. Fox 9 investigator Jeff Ballion showing us tonight the hidden health risk that we all face when we're on the road. They're hiding in your car's exhaust. Thousands of tiny assassins you can't see. This may be about a hundred times smaller than, than the thickness of a human hair. These nasty little particles stick to other toxins and form plumes of poison. There probably isn't a safe level that we know of. Mark Olson is well aware of the threat. I can just feel that it, 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 it's hard to breathe. Bad air is bad news. I'm going to give myself extra time, walk a little slower. For anyone with a bad heart. I had a heart attack about eight years ago. His risk of suffering another one goes up when the Metro's air quality goes down. All that stuff floating around can wreak havoc on the circulatory system. It starts triggering what can lead to heart attack or stroke. But here's a shocker for the rest of us. Polluted air is also a hazard for healthy people with no cardiovascular disease. There's growing scientific evidence it could mean trouble for your ticker later in life. And that's cholesterol plaque that's uh, start clogging this artery. Researchers now know that those invisible particles we inhale can end up in your bloodstream and over time damage your arteries, raising your risk for a heart attack or a stroke. One study in California looked at the health impact of commuters who spent a lot of time in heavy traffic. They actually found the longer the commute, the more likely people were to have calcified arteries. By no means is the air in the Twin Cities on par with Los Angeles smog. But the more we learn about those noxious little pollutants, the more we understand there's a risk of harm no matter what the level. Standards keep lowering as scientists gain more information about the impacts of air pollution on human health. The state is constantly checking air quality, but its two dozen monitoring stations in the metro give only a general picture of what we're breathing. They can't detect the pollution levels inside your car during rush hour. Fox 9 investigators are going to give it a try. Meet Jake Swanson, a professor from Minnesota State Mankato who's done a lot of research on this issue. Basically, we want to capture the, the airflow which is, which is going by the car. These devices, loaned to us by TSI Incorporated, will measure the particle contamination outside and inside our news vehicle. All right, here we go. Operation Air Detector. We jump on the Crosstown Freeway heading towards downtown Minneapolis. We're definitely seeing higher just as we get into the flow of traffic here. We're... As we enter the commons area with 35W, the outside sensor detects there's more particle pollution. No surprise, there's more traffic. But what's the effect on the air we're breathing? It seems like we're about half as much uh, inside as, as compared to outside. Our truck's ventilation system blocks out some of the pollution. If we turn on the air recirculation mode, the levels drop even more, but then the windows fog up. And when we use the defroster, the particle levels inside jump to nearly the same as what's outside. We're very clearly capturing kind of bits of the plume of the vehicle ahead of us. Many newer vehicles come with cabin air filters to trap dust, pollen, and other impurities. Mark Olson makes sure the one in his car is changed regularly. Absolutely. But that might not be such a good idea. Really? That slides in like that. We compared air quality in our test vehicle with a cabin filter installed, and then again with it removed. So that's indicating not a, not a huge effect. There was little difference in terms of particle pollution. You can see it's actually kind of brown on, on both sides. That discoloration means those itsy bitsy toxins, the ones that are potentially bad for our health, are still sneaking into the passenger cabin. The solution, says Professor Swanson, is to install a super high efficiency filter that will trap those bad actors, or just don't change the filter so often. The dirty filter is gonna be a better filter. The more gunk it collects, the harder it is for those ultrafine particles to get through. On the day of our test, we didn't detect any widespread pollution at alarming levels, but there were pockets of concern. The Lowry Tunnel, for example, was showing nearly 200,000 particles per cubic centimeter of air. That's more in line with Los Angeles. That starts to become a concentration where I, as an individual, you know, I don't want to, to breathe that all day long. 
We saw similar levels driving behind a diesel truck. We're clearly measuring what's coming from this truck, um, and it's, it's quite high. Contrary to what you might think, our test found fewer particles in the air when rush hour traffic was crawling as opposed to moving quickly. Engines produce more pollution at higher speeds. It really makes you think. Many heart experts, including Dr. Smalley, say you should try to reduce your exposure to this toxic soup. Stay off busy highways when you can. But don't exercise outdoors near lots of traffic. Making small adjustments in what you're doing, or maybe even the time of day or where you're doing it, might make a real difference for somebody's health. Bad air tends to hang over busy roadways, but our test found that things got much cleaner just three blocks away. So think about that the next time you're outside doing any physical activity or when you're choosing a place to live. I'm Fox 9 investigator Jeff Ballion.